Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2014 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so let's take a read of the first item. Five jam producers set out a list of costs shown on the insert provided. Classify each cost as either manufacturing account or income statement. For each item classified as manufacturing account, indicate whether it is a direct or indirect cost. Item number zero has been done for you as an example. So I recreated the handout and as you can see, you have number, which is item number. You have cost items, so you have a list of, well, it's, it's 10 here. It's 11, actually, but the first one was done as, as an example. Then you have the manufacturing account classification or income statement classification. And under manufacturing, you have either direct or indirect. Now, factory office expenses is a manufacturing expense, but it is indirect. So we're going to put a tick in that column. Next, factory overheads. Well, that is also manufacturing. And, well, it literally tells us it's overheads. Overheads is automatically indirect. Next, we have wages of sales assistant. Well, that's non-manufacturing, so it can only be in the income statement. Then we have selling and distribution expenses, also non-manufacturing, so income statement. Next, we have wages of production worker. So wages of a production worker is manufacturing because it says production. And more specifically, it is direct. Depreciation of factory equipment. So once it says factory, it's manufacturing. And because it is not a direct cost, it is indirect. Then we have purchases of raw materials. That is definitely factory and definitely direct. Now, we have design cost per bottle. So there was a bit of debate on this in my class one day, but ultimately we decided and we, re we looked up some stuff online and in a couple of textbooks and we decided that we'll classify this as an income statement and it's not, it's not manufacturing related. So it's income statement. Next, we have mortgage interest. So that's not manufacturing. So we'll put it in the income statement. Administration costs, again, non-manufacturing. So income statement. And then cost of bottles purchased. So people were like, well, what is the bottle doing? Well, remember, it's a jam company. And the jam is the container in which you put your actual product, which is the jam. So it's packaging. And packaging is direct. So it's manufacturing and direct. If, of course, you disagree with any of these, let me know in the comments section below. And if you could also attach a link to your source of information to support what you said, that would be great as well. Okay, let's take a look at part B to this question. Okay, so let's take a read of the information for part B. It says, Blings and Things Manufacturing provided the following list of balances for the year ended 30th, November 2013. So we have a whole list of stuff here. Carriage in on raw materials, carriage out, direct wages, rent. We have inventories at 1st December 2012. We have three items, raw materials, finished goods, work in process. We have purchases of raw materials, returns in, returns out, sales, factory overheads, and closing inventories at 30th November 2013. Raw materials, finished goods, and work in progress. We have one additional note which says that, well, okay, one-fifth of the rented premises is used as office space and the remaining four-fifths of the rented premises is utilized for the actual manufacturing processes. And we have to prepare statements of manufacturing costs for blings and things manufacturing for the year ended 30th November 2013, showing clearly the following. So cost of raw materials consumed, prime cost, and cost of production. Okay, now instead of doing three separate statements, I just did a single manufacturing account. If you are not familiar with the manufacturing account, I'm going to put a link up there, well, a card up there, sorry, and a link to it in the description below. So be sure to check that video out and then come back here so that way at least you're not moving blindly. Okay, so let's get into the manufacturing account. So as per usual, please head up properly. Name of the entity, name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. So the first thing we're going to start up with is a calculation of the raw materials consumed. Now that's going to mirror and basically be exactly like a cost of goods sold calculation from your trading account. You're going to start with your opening stock, in this case of raw materials, which of course we get from over here, right? It says inventories, 1st December 2012, and raw materials is 20,000. Then to that, we're going to add purchases, and that figure is 50,000, so we're going to populate that here. Now I've shifted it across because 
we have carriage in on raw materials and the cost of delivery on raw materials is part of the cost of raw materials because it is part of the cost of acquiring the raw materials. So we add those two things together, we get 52,000 and we do have a returns out figure in the information of 1200. So you might be asking, well, Chris, it doesn't say returns out of raw materials. But remember, even though we normally associate returns out with purchases in a regular income statement, that returns out of finished goods which we have previously purchased and are now sending back. But here, we are not purchasing goods. All that we are purchasing is raw materials. So this returns out item has no choice but to be returns out on raw materials. So when we subtract that from the 52,000, we get 50,800, which is the net purchases of raw materials value, which we'll add to the opening inventory, and that will give us the cost of raw materials available for use. Now from that, we are going to deduct the raw materials closing inventory balance of 11,700. And that's going to give us a cost of materials consumed of 59,100. So that part alone was with five marks. Now the next piece we have to show is prime costs. Prime costs are all of the direct costs of production. The cost of raw materials consumed, your direct wages or direct labor, and any other direct costs. Now in the information across here, I am seeing direct wages, but I am not seeing any other direct costs. So I believe that all we have to do is add those direct wages and we will get a prime cost figure of 119,100. And now we have to deal with the factory overheads. Sorry, I was supposed to explain that first and then populate. Sorry, so normally I'd have a heading saying factory overheads and we'll have a whole list of items, but here they did it a bit differently. They actually gave us a figure for factory overheads and there's one other item that we have to take into consideration, which is which has to do with this note down here. So one-fifth of the rented premises is used as office space and the remaining four-fifths of the rented premises is utilized for manufacturing. So what that means is that this rent figure up here of 36,000 has to be a portion between the manufacturing account and the income statement. And as the note says, one-fifth is for the office space which is non-manufacturing and the other four-fifths are for the actual manufacturing process. So what we have to do is simply find four-fifths of 36,000. That's going to give us 28.8. We'll add that to the overheads. That's going to give us a total of 43.6 and that's going to give us the total cost of production for the current period. Now that's not the item three they were asking for which is the cost of production because we need to adjust this for the work in process. So work in process refers to goods that were started but not completed. The opening balance of work in process is added because those costs are from a previous period and brought forward to the current period and included as part of the current period's costs. And similarly, the work in process at end or work in progress at end of 3000, that figure has to be deducted because those costs are now transferred out of here to a future period when the goods will be completed. So when we do our arithmetic, we get the cost of production of 175,700. And that's the end of it. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question five from the Jan 2014 POA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll make sure to get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm gonna put a couple of cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll see some POA handles you might find useful. Anyhow guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.